How ethanol is made. Ethanol can come from things that grow. Starchy crops, sweet crops, and even plants or trees. These are what we call cellulosic material. But how do those crops get from the field to your fuel tank? It's a process that starts by grinding the feedstock into small particles and pulverizing the starch into a fine powder. Now add water and you have a nice mash going. Add a special enzyme and the starch breaks down into teensy tiny little particles. Want to see the starch liquefy and reduce bacteria? Turn the mash way down low to simmer. Now crank up the heat and the starch breaks down even more. Cool! No, really, cool the mash before adding a second enzyme. This one helps to convert the liquid starch to a sugar, or dextrose as we science types call it. And now it's time for fermentation. Let's synchronize. For the next 48 hours, we're mixing mash and yeast. As all you chemists and magicians know, this is where the sugar, presto, changes to ethanol, and the natural carbon dioxide is separated. See this fermented mash? It contains about 10% ethanol. But which 10%? To extract that ethanol, crank up the heat again and watch the ethanol vaporize. Then cool, then condense into this splish, splash, liquid form. Now, you want to purify the mix, so remove any remaining H2O. And what's left is ethanol, about 200 proof. Potent, but it can't be potable, which explains the next step. Add a small amount of gasoline, from 2 to 5 percent. That's called denaturing, and it's a requirement for all fuel-grade ethanol. What happens to the leftovers? Well, nothing goes to waste. The distiller's grain becomes a nutritious livestock feed. And carbon dioxide goes into carbonated beverages and dry ice. The remaining ethanol, like any fuel, is sold to distributors for delivery to neighborhood stations. What's at your pump? E10, a blend of 10% ethanol, can be used in almost any car manufactured since 1980. And E85. A blend that contains 85% ethanol is for the increasing number of flex fuel vehicles on the road. Just so you know, the same process that converts corn into ethanol works with sugar too. And biomass, which is just another name for the waste from fields and forests. Today, look around. There are ethanol production plants all over the U.S. with more popping up all the time. That means more ethanol-enriched gasoline available in more places. So next time your tank is on E, fill her up with a high-performance, renewable, ethanol-enriched fuel. It's good for your car, because it runs cleaner and cooler. It's good for your country, because it adds American jobs and reduces U.S. dependence on foreign oil. And it's better for your environment, because it's a renewable fuel that greatly reduces harmful tailpipe emissions. And to think... It all started with corn. To learn more, visit our website at www.drivingethanol.org.